answer any questions that you have or anything that you want to say about this. You can be free in asking me. You can ask me. How many of you agree with me that brain, uh, people with brain disorders should not be punished if they commit a crime? Should be punished? Should be punished? You can say yes or no. Only two choices allowed. Okay? Brain, people with brain disorders who have committed a crime should be punished. People with brain disorders who have committed a crime should not be punished. What if they commit a crime again? You let them out. Because uh, you have a brain disorder. They go out. Don't you think they are the ones more likely to commit a crime again? Because they have a brain disorder. But punishment and reform should be thought of. And you have to reform them in such a way uh, that they may not commit a crime again. But then, if you have a brain disorder, are you likely to be reformed in the first place? Unlikely. So there lies the question and the dilemma. Adi, I would like to know what you think of this. Uh, we are extremely, extremely sorry that our wireless mic is not working. We regret the inconvenience. Please, if you want to, if you have any questions, if you want to speak something, please, uh, will you please head over to the, this area. Uh, actually, I have a different view, sir. Uh, the researches and the points that are here can be used uh, to de decide upon whether a person can be reformed or a death penalty can be given. Sir. So, if suppose uh, a person has a frontal lobe problem and if there is a chance that we can cure him, uh, actually we can send him to a reformation center even if he has committed a very serious crime. And uh, if, they, if we cannot cure the person, and if we send a information center, it's a wastage of time and money. And we send out him into the public, there's a chance that he will be a problem to people. So it's better that such a person will be given a permanent punishment. I agree with you. I think that's a very sensible thing to say. If you have a permanent brain disorder which cannot be cured, you're not doing much favor to the society by sending him back into there. So I guess we have to take some tough decisions with those people. But if you have a curable one, like the one with the glioma, why not? and the rare behavioral disorder, why not? So you tend to identify and then treat them. If you can't, I guess you don't want to send that man back into the society again. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I had a question. Uh, there were these scans that you showed that the criminals had reduced frontal lobe activity. So is it possible that uh, due to the repeated criminal behavior, is it possible to condition the frontal lobe because of the criminal behavior? Would there be a change in the frontal lobe? You have a very valid uh, point. Did the frontal lobe activity come down because of the criminal behavior, or the decreased activity caused the criminal behavior? We won't know. But these people also had abnormal structural brains. Structural abnormalities are also there. The function was low but the structure was also abnormal. They had scars. Um, in children who have hypoxic injuries, um, learning disabilities, attention deficit, uh, child abuse, they tend to have abnormal dorsolateral frontal cortices. And they have been shown to later develop abnormalities. They have been followed up throughout their life. They tend to have later antisocial personalities. So, the decreased perfusion may be causative it may be a result, consequence of what happened. But if you have a structural abnormality, it's likely to be cause. You're right. We may have to do more study on this. I'm glad you asked this question. Thank you, sir. Sir, I read somewhere people with chromosomal abnormalities like X double Y will, will have criminal behavior. Do they have the same problem of frontal abnormalities also? Yes. This is a very interesting question. Extra Y. Why does it cause more amount of criminal behavior? Why do men tend to commit more crimes than a woman? It's called uh, neuroandrogenic evolution. Neuroandrogenic evolution. Why do men commit more crimes? Let's go back to a different thing, right? Why chromosome men? Okay, so males. So why do they commit more crimes? Women tend to choose males who are able to provide for the offspring. That's the universal truth. Whatever else 
love, emotions, feelings, these are all good. But ultimately, most women choose men who can provide for their offspring. That means socially well off, financially well off. What about the men who are not able to provide, who are not able to take care, who, are not, who don't have enough finances to marry a woman they like because they are not able to provide? They tend to be competitive, aggressive and they tend to uh, be involved in more anti-social acts to gain the woman because they have no other way. If they simply stand there and ask to be chosen, they won't be. So they tend to do that to gain the attention of the woman and also remove the competition. You are a competitor, but I want the woman, you are off. That tends to provoke criminal activity. Extra Y chromosome may contribute to that sort of a thinking more. That's probably the reason why in the, in the loop of neuroandrogenic evolution, the people with extra Y chromosomes tend to be a little bit more antisocial. But all men are not criminals. They're not criminally minded. They don't do all this stuff competitively. This is just a theory which works out in some people. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for that wonderful speech. Sir. You're welcome. It was really very nice. Uh, you said there was a referral bias and you said that one percent of us could be psychopaths. It's a gen very general doubt, sir. Uh, how can we possibly try to recognize such people in the general Recognize. Country? Because, you know, it's a very, uh, from a general uh, point of view, you know, watching too many movies kind of thing. They say some people have uh, uh, characters that could portray, you know, you know, subtle changes that could be seen. So do you have any, uh, could you elaborate on that? If How to recognize psychopaths among us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sweating now. <laughs> That's a difficult question, but a good question though. It's very difficult to find out. Psychopaths would have been, I mean, if you see movies, that's where you gather your information from, no? They would have been normal people. They would have been working with you in the office. Very good, good family men. But every year they, come, they murder one person. You know that. I mean, most movies would have shown that and they've been documented also. It's very difficult to recognize a psychopath. But you can see some traits like lack of too much emotion. They may be normally well-behaved people. They may not empathize with you. They'll listen to you. They'll not empathize. They'll be, they'll not show the feelings which you expect in a cert certain situation. But they'll be well-behaved, well-dressed. But they'll not be listening to you. These are leads. But then to differentiate a true psychopath will be very difficult. Um, you may find some minor neurological abnormalities, frontal lobe, uh, abnormalities. Yes. Being medical students and doctors, you may look for those. But then if you start looking for that in everyone around you, I'm not sure it will be very popular. Yes, definitely so. Yeah. Uh, my simple answer is, I don't know. You may not be able to recognize the psychopaths. You can't. That's why there have been so, re so many serial killers who have not been detected early. If we could, they would. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, I have a question. Some, uh, some of the decoits and some of them are uh, treated by counselling. Counselling? How can you explain it, sir? Some of them are punished. What? Some of them let off. Yes. Some of them can be cured by counselling from great personalities. We, we read in the stories like... Stories say that some of the people with uh, some of the criminals can be treated by counselling. Some of them are punished. You are asking why? The dif why is that difference between the two? Counselling, see minor crimes, or petty thefts, antisocial behaviour, you may get away with counselling. But if a crime is serious, uh, there must have been a lot of planning which has gone into it. And uh, the person is likely to commit that crime again because of the seriousness of the offence and what harm is does, it does to the society. So, counselling alone may not help in such people. Punishment acts as a deterrent. But if a patient, uh, if a, a criminal is not likely to get better with deterrence, 
then you may need to uh, think about it. Abnormal structural, uh, abnormal structures of the brain, if you punish, it may act as a deterrent to other people, but not for that patient, it may not reform. So, counseling helps in minor crimes, punishment in more severe crimes, more serious ones. That's all I can say. So, is there any, any physiological activity associated with that? With? With that minor crimes, any physiology? Physiological have? activity. Yes, I think I've discussed uh, in one or two slides that children who have had birth injuries, children who have learning disabilities, ADHD, uh, they've had minor traumas, uh, parental abuse, they tend to develop dorsolateral dysfunction or damage. They tend to commit antisocial acts, minor crimes. People with orbitofrontal or ventromedial injuries, they tend to have more severe personality disorders, they tend to commit more severe crimes. So this is a very gross differentiation. Sometimes they overlap. But if you, if you want me to differentiate and tell you, this is how it would be. Uh, so the physiology there would differentiate between minor crimes, dorsolateral, more serious crimes, ventromedial. But it overlaps again. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. It's uh, turning out to be a legal discussion more than a <laughs> neurological one, but I'm enjoying it. There's no problem. Is it it? Thank you very much for giving me this chance and I'll take it. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful lecture. Uh, as we see it, neurology is an extremely hard subject for us undergraduates, but we love the way that you make the subject very interesting by the very uh, common examples that you give that we come through in our life, the movies, the actors, the so we definitely love to hear from you more and more from, in our future coming sessions, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.